Hi and welcome back to my channel for another art channeling video. Today I'm playing again in the Dino Weekly Media Journal. I have prepped the page with aqua ground first and then I've added some stenciling with um, crackle paste. Unfortunately the paste is not a real crackle paste. It's the first time I tried that out. Um, it looks almost like a texture paste. You can't see the cracks really good. I have wet the whole page and now I'm going in with my watercolors. I love to play intuitively and I love the flow of the watercolors, especially on that paper. But that only works really good when you use the aqua ground. The aqua ground um, seals the surface a little bit so that the uh, watercolors don't sink into it immediately when you use the Dino Weekly um, watercolor paper in this journal and you just use it without any primer and watercolors the watercolors immediately sinks into the paper and you have not many chances to move it around I let the colors drip a little and I try to keep some white space. When you have some white space on your page and also some really dark areas, you have a higher contrast, which makes a page look even more interesting. Coming back to that crackle paste, um, it's a new one I've tried out. It's from a German online store and it's their uh, own brand, I believe and it has almost no cracks when I compare it with the Deco Art Media. Uh, the Deco Art Media works much better. One problem I had with this paste was that it completely dried out so you have to use it up very fast. I'm really interested which crackle paste you have tried out and which one you like and if it's normal that they dry out so quickly. When you have some experiences, I would like to know them and maybe you'd like to leave me a comment. I can't tell you for sure which stencil this was. I believe it's one from Seth Apter and I think it's called Alphabet Spaghetti. After I've tried everything completely with my heat tool, I lay the stencil on top again and use a wet baby wipe to remove some of the watercolor. I really like to use this technique with watercolors and a stencil because when you have a texture paste I used with the stencil first it's a non-porous surface and you can remove the color easy. And this also moves the paint into these tiny cracks that the paste has made and now you can see the cracks a little bit. For each of my pages, you will always find close-up images over on my blog. So there's a link in the description box. I'm going in with more color. I just play intuitively here. I have no idea what the final page should look like. And that's the fun of the process. I think that you uh, don't have any special reason to, to create. It's just for fun and sometimes the results are really pretty and you can um, note that down for the next time you're creating something or maybe use the same technique on a canvas or on a greeting card. I always try to use complementary colors that makes a page more interesting and that's the same with the higher contrast when you have really dark and light areas um, you have more depth and you will catch the viewer's eyes. You don't need to have watercolors for this technique. You could probably also use your inks. A lot of art journalists have these spray inks, for example, the dilutions. And you can just uh, screw off the top and use them with a brush, just as watercolors. Now I'm going through my stash of all stamped images I have laying around. These are the brand new flowers that will be released soon this month um, over in my store. Um, finally, I decided not to use them on this page, 
but when I see it now in the video I think it looks really pretty so maybe I will create a page with them later. Before I'm picking a main image I decided to add some more background stamping and I'm using the Weed Love stamp set. I will also add some script stamping with our vintage postcard stamp and I'm using archival ink. If you're interested in a process video of the left page here in the journal, you will find it linked up at the end of the video. I decided I need more splatters on the page, so I believe I'm using black watercolor to create them. I'm very happy with the background now and it's time to uh, pick a focal image. And I have pulled out some of the rubber dance crunchy butterflies. These are embossed onto vellum that was colored with alcohol markers. I have a video on my EGTV channel, so maybe you like to check that out. A link to my Instagram account is also in the description box. In the end, I decided to pick just a simple flower. This is one of my doodle flowers and I just quickly color it in with the watercolors I've also used on the page. I always try to use focal images with matching colors. They don't have to be exactly the same, but it's always good when they are not completely different. And here I'm adding again some splatters. Is this is something I can't stop doing and I just use white watercolor for that. I cut out my flower and now I'm cutting also some words to add to the page. These are words from the journal word stamp set and you can see it I have added um, a die cut behind those words. This is a piece from these uh, Tim Holtz border dies that came out a while ago and I will add the rest of it to the left side of the page. And here you can see the finished spread. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you see us next time. Bye!